Syria. Now, look at the, what we read. You will see that David and his men had a very serious challenge. What was their challenge? They all went out normally as men will go out. They went to work. They went to search for the things that will make the life of the, both themselves and their families better. Now, David and his men and his men represents a proper man. Now, what is the responsibility of a proper man? A proper man should not be tying to well. 11 a.m. in the morning, sitting down at home. That's not a man. That's a boy. We can call him a full-grown boy. A normal man is a working man. Say after me, all the men. A, a normal man is a working man. Say it again. A normal man is a working man. So they went out to work to gather what they will use to make their lives and the families and their families better. And the Bible says by the time they came back, the Amalekites, that's the enemy, they came, they attacked the, 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 the town, they carried everything that they had away. Everything was taken away. Not one was left. In fact, as at that time we were told that David had two wives. His wives were taken away. Their children gone. And when all of them returned, the Bible showed us in verse 5, or verse 6, sorry, the Bible says, and they, they started to weep. Now, when they all came, the Bible says all the men. Now, what did they do? They started crying. They wept and wept and wept until they had no more power to weep again. Imagine for a man to cry, you know, it takes time for a man to cry. Man doesn't, men just don't always easily cry. That any small thing, they begin to cry. Any man that cries easily like that is a woman. Or can I call him a boy man? Now, but for a man to cry, before you see a man cry, a man now cried to the point that the Bible says they no longer had strength. It shows you that they, they, they were facing serious pain. But all of a sudden, amidst the crying of those men, David did something that I want us to learn from. David did something that I want us to learn from. I want us to read from verse 6. And David was greatly distressed for the people's sake. Of, uh, sorry, for the people. Where am I? Greatly distressed for the people's sake. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But the Bible says David did what? And David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, the first thing I want us to learn here in being able to handle challenges, I want us to look at David. Number one, David did not waste his precious time on what could not produce the needed solution. That's the first thing I want us to see. David did not waste his precious time doing what will not lead to his solution. Every other bad person was crying. They were crying bitterly. But David himself understood that crying will not produce the solution we are looking for. So the first thing he did was to encourage himself. And what does that show us? That It shows us that David did not waste his time doing the things that will not produce solution. Do you know that one of the reasons why challenges prolong Situations don't change in the life of so many people. It's because, number one, most people are wasting their time doing the things that will not produce the solution. Wasting their time doing the things that will not make things, that does not change anything. You are just wasting your energy, wasting your resources, wasting precious time that cannot be recovered. Can you imagine somebody has challenges and all he's doing is going around and talking about his challenges. He's just talking about his challenges. That's why I always tell my leaders, Whenever we call for a meeting, I always tell them, Do, I didn't call you for this meeting to tell me about the problem. I already know the problem. If I call you for a meeting, I call you, let us discuss the way out. Stop wasting your time on what will not produce anything. That's why you take your time to observe yourself. What are those things you are doing that you know will not produce anything? Are you crying like the men of, uh, of David were crying? What are those things that you know will not produce anything? Some of you are not crying. Some of you are just sitting down. You are telling yourself, one day go better. Nothing will happen if you are doing nothing. And I want you to know that nothing will happen if you are doing the wrong thing. 
Don't forget, nothing will happen if you do nothing. And nothing good will happen if you're also doing the wrong thing. Ask yourself, what I am doing, does it lead to my solution? If no, stop it then. David encouraged himself in the Lord. David did not waste his precious time on what could not produce the solution. They all resorted to crying until David decided to stop. I want you to take time, I wrote here, to ask yourself, if what you are, you, you are or have been doing will lead to the desired solution that you want. Just like what uh, the disciples were doing in the face of the storm. Remember the case of the storm? The Bible says the disciples were inside the boat. The storm was coming and they were, you know, they got buckets. They got pails. They were making sure they were packing the water and throwing it back into the sea. They tried and tried and tried. The one that was coming in was more than the one they were throwing out. Then all of a sudden, one of them said, let's go tell the master. I'm a maku. We are going to die. It's mommy Henry here. We are going to die. Tap her for me. They now went to the master and said, master, care it not that we are going to die. Care it not that we are going to die. The Bible says the master stood up and said to them, you men of little faith. The Bible says he faced the storm and did what? And commanded the storm. Be still! And instantly, the storm was still. Why was it not still before? They were doing the wrong thing. So many people today, the reason why your problem persists, the reason why you have not gotten the change of your desire is because you are doing the wrong thing. And a wise man said, it is insanity to be doing the, wrong, the same thing the same way and expecting a different result. If you want a different result, learn to do things differently. Say so here. So you know what David did? He, the first thing he did was to say, see, let's stop crying. Stop it. Let's begin to do the right thing from now. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Wisdom for the right thing will locate you in Jesus' name. I wrote here, so many future is being destroyed today because of wrong actions. Because of wrong action. Until you stop doing the wrong thing. Hear me? You won't get the right result. Until you stop doing the wrong thing, you won't get the right result. Until you stop doing the wrong thing, you won't get the right result. Until you stop doing the wrong thing, you won't get the right result. Stop that wrong thing so that the right results can come. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Your season of results, the results of your desire, begins now in Jesus' name. Let's go further. What was the next thing he did? Now listen, the Bible says, don't forget, he encouraged himself. What was the, let's look at the right thing he did. The right thing he did, the Bible says the first thing was to what? Encourage himself. Abi? He encouraged himself. Why did David encourage himself first? Now, and that's the first thing I want us to say as children of God. Hallelujah. David knew that there is no how as a person you can think straight if you are discouraged. So the first thing he had to do is, ah, ah, if I'm, ah, the way I am now, we are distressed. Ah, this stress is too much. If I act now, I will be taking the wrong step. What do I do? Let me find courage first. Just like I always tell them in our church here, I always tell some of our people, anytime you are angry, calm down. Don't take steps. Anytime you are extremely happy, calm down. Don't take steps. There is what we call 80% tendency that when you are extremely happy or angry, you can make wrong choice. Calm down. Find courage for yourself first. David encouraged himself. Now, and how do you encourage yourself? It's simple. I always tell you, when you are faced with challenges and it looks as if you want to be depressed, you know what you should think of? Think of the promises of God over your life. Now, when you think of his promises, you know he cannot lie. When you think of his promises, the one he gave, what he told you about yourself, 
what he told you about your future, what he told you about your business, what he told you about your ministry, what he told you about your home. Whenever you remember it, in the presence of challenges, I'm telling you, you'll find courage. Because until you are encouraged, eh, you can't know the right thing to do. Hello? Don't take steps in your discouraged state. Now, I'll just brief this once. But where I'm really going because of our time is where I'm, I want to enter now. After he encouraged himself, I want us to read verse 7 and verse 8. Please show us on screen. Verse 7 and verse 8. Now, the challenge is now before God. I want to show you the mistakes that this generation of believers make. I want to address you as Christians now. Because Christian is a nickname that was given to the believers in Antioch. We are all believers. Say, I'm a believer in Christ. Now, as believers, let's look at our present day mistake. Now, look at this scripture. Look up, everybody. The Bible says, after he had encouraged himself, and David said to Abba, Abiathar the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither what the effort. And Abiathar brought the effort to David. Verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after these troops? Shall I overtake them? Listen. And, and he answered, Pursue. Thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover. Leave it on screen like this. I want to ask you, what did you notice here? You know what I noticed? Let me show you. Today's Christian, this is how we pray. Today's believers, Lord, concerning this issue, I don't know what to do. Oh Lord, please show me what to do. Father, show me what to do. Oh God, show me what to do. Father, show me what to do to come out of joblessness. Father, show me what to do to come out of this condition. Father, show me what to do so I can have a child. Father, show me what to do so that my life can be comfortable. Father, show me what to do so that my marriage will not scatter. Father, show me what to do. Today's believers. But look at the believers of those days. They first use their brain. Show me verse 8. Lord, should I pursue? Now, if you look at the question of David, it shows responsibility. I don't know what I'm communicating. Shall I pursue? Which means, before David began to pray, to ask God for help, he had sat down. He had thought of what to do. Now, I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. The reason why they had results and our generation kind of Christian are not having results is this. We suspend the function of our brain. Hello. I will come again. You have not caught it. And David inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue? After the troops, shall I overtake? And what was God's response? And God responded that the outcome of your thinking is good. Pursue. You will overtake. Without fail, recover all. And I said, today's Christian, we sit down. Lord, what will I do to become a millionaire? Lord, show me. Lord, show me. Lord, show me. Lord, show me. It's different from David's prayer. David must have sat down. At your row, ah, if I do this business, this business, and this business, I think I know this business. This business will prosper. 
he will now come before God. Father, this is what I've concluded. If I stay here, I will die. If I go back to the city, I will die. Because I have leprosy, they will stone me to death. Lord, should I go to the camp of the Syrians? Will I get help? Now, you will see that in those days, those believers, they understand the reason why God gave them brain. But today's Christian, we want to see miracle. Without us wanting to do anything. And it doesn't work. You will see that it was what he presented to God that God blessed. Am I communicating? How are you going to waste your time staying on the mountain? Somebody will say, I've been, I've been on the mountain 120 days. I want to prosper. When will you do what to make you prosper? God is not saying you should come to him with empty hands. God is saying, come to me with the conclusion of your thoughts. Oh God, Shagad Abade again. So many of us are not here. Listen, David sought God's face over his conclusion. I want you to see the difference between the believers of then and now. See how they seek the face of God. They bring the outcome of their productive thought before the Lord. But today's believers. Do not use their brain at all, their mind at all. But will only say, oh God, what should I do? I wrote here, life challenges will be solved by two things. And what is that? What is that? Calculation and intercession. Now, calculation, human effort. Intercession, divine support. Now, those are the two things that makes life challenges to be solved. What have you calculated that God will now come down with his, with his intervention over? Today's Christian, ask them, what is the conclusion of your mind? What is the conclusion of your mind? I met somebody and he was telling me, a prophet told me that I cannot prosper unless I, I sell the things that, uh, uh, that, that sell the, the, I should sell uh, 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 tomatoes. Anything, tomato, rodo, tatashi, and all those things. He said, and the prophet said, I must not add anything like oil to it if I want to prosper. And since she has been selling it, she has not prospered. <laughs> You know why God gave us brain? The late Archbishop Benson also said, God gave us brain so that we can give him rest. Why is China still the leading country when it comes to productivity today? They use their brain. Do you know that Nigeria has the largest church in the world, but Nigeria has started borrowing, borrowing from China. All the great men of God are in Nigeria. Pastor Debo is where? Here. Bishop Oedeko is where? Here. Dr. Paul in nature is where? Here. Reverend David Ibiomio is where? Here. How many men of God do we have in China? Answer me now. Life challenges can only be solved by these two. Calculation and what? Intercession. God will not put his blessing until you calculate. And what is calculation? The productive, your productive mind. David did not say, look for the prophet. I mean, see, Woli, Ebami Shewa, the Kini, Olorun Fekashi, Lori Oroi. What does God want us to do in this matter? But he said, wait. 
he encouraged himself. Then he started thinking, what do I do? What do I do? I think I should pray to people. Bring the effort. Let's ask the Lord. Some of you that are failing in some aspect of your life, have you really sat down to even ask, is it the devil that is making me to fail? Some people are failing today, not because of the devil. Some people are failing because of extravagant life. Some people are failing today, not because of the devil. Some people are failing today because of laziness. Some people are failing today, not because of the devil, but because of lack of creativity. And if you ask them, you say, the Lord has not spoken. Some people have been on the mountain, they are still waiting for the voice of God. Look up. On Thursday, I was in Lagos. Not physically, but online. Now, and I was watching a minister's conference I would have loved to attend. And it was Pastor Matthew Ashimolo that was invited to preach. And you know, the funny part, the minister's conference was not just him preaching. It was question and answer time. And they asked him a question. You are in the level of our fathers. What will you say are the mistakes you, our fathers, have made that is putting us in trouble today? Oh God, that question, I had to type the straight, sir, that you minister to me. But it's not for you. Now, don't think I've come to preach their message. This one I've been prepared. You know I've prepared my message ahead. But you don't suspend your brain. If everything is just about divine, 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 Nigeria will be forefront in everything. Can you imagine? Even when we wanted to play against Ghana, we prayed more than we practiced. Yet, we didn't go to work up. Me too. Uh, uh, because they didn't show I was watching it. I was praying. Lord, help Nigeria. Walk up. Walk up. Nigeria. Walk up. Ni you know the reason why I was not offended? It was this same Nigeria Ghana that made me backslide in 1989. I remember very, very well. I prayed so well. In the days of Aloyago, Ghana defeated us 2 1. I, t I threw my Bible away. I won't go to church in my life again. So this same thing now repeated itself this year. I didn't throw my Bible again. No. I grieve more. C come to the message. Hello? So life challenges will be solved by two things. What, was, what are those two things again? Calculation and intercession. God's hands helping you to carry out your conclusion. Stop thinking God will not need your brain in order to help you. Stop thinking God will not need your brain in order to help you. They asked Pastor Matthew, let me continue because some of you are interested. Is Pastor Matthew said, the mistake our fathers made and part of the mistake that I came out of is that how can you say God call you then you will not do any kind of business. He said, that was the trend I was following. But when Foursquare sent me to London to open a church, I got counsel from someone. Follow me. He said, and the person counseled me that pastor be wise. He said, so when I was going from Nigeria to London, I bought some things, I sold it there. And when I sold it, I used the money I collected to buy musical equipment. Hear me. I brought it to Nigeria and put it in Ebenezer Obey Music Store. 
He said, I collected it. The money I collected at the age of 27 years, I built my first house. He said, and my salary as a full-time pastor in First Square Gospel Church was 40 naira. He said, then I traveled again. When I traveled again, he said, there is this policy that, uh, 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 that was made in Nigeria that I mentioned the president. No Christian book was coming to Nigeria. Follow me. He said, so I liaised with the foreigners abroad. I became the major importer of Christian books to Nigeria. That was what gave us to Matasin Media uh, a house. Hear me. He said, I made pastors that year in the 80s $500 million from Christian book in one year. He said, then I came to Lekki and bought 30,000 acres of land and kept it for how much? 90,000 naira. He said, today, I sell one plot for 80 million. If he didn't use his head, and he said, oh, look, wah, sha, no, me, oh, look, wah, be, me, ever no, see, oh, look, wah. Let me tap your neighbor, say, use your brain. No child of God is supposed to be poor. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Where am I? So God's hands helping you to carry out your conclusion. Stop. Okay, I've taken that. He didn't need a miracle. Now look at Luke chapter 5. The miracle of Peter. He didn't need a miracle to cast his net into the sea. Did he? No. But when he cast his net, miracle brought the fish, Abby. Was it a miracle that helped him gather it? The Bible says he beckoned for people. Help me. Help me over there. Help me over, there. Help me over here. I love David. So many children of God are too spiritual. I was sharing our testimony with uh, somewhere and some Christians. The pastor quickly called the members. And say, ah, members, uh, he's, uh, uh, that's the instruction of Pastor Prince. And I'll give them this example. Now, listen. When we got married, first three years of our marriage, we didn't have a child. I want more Agbadua, she go work, we walk. Because you should understand that spiritual approach will only solve spiritual problem. You can't use spiritual to solve natural problem. Will you go to your house? Your gas is finished. And you begin to pray in the name of Jesus, Father, my rice is not yet done. The gas just got finished. In the name of Jesus, come on, I command you gas. Come on, continue to walk. In the name of Jesus, this rice must be ready. It must be ready. It must be ready. I read in the Bible that Apostle Ababala, he was coming from a program. Oh, the fuel got finished. As the fuel finished, he told the people, urinate inside the, inside the tank. They urinated inside the tank. Oh, come on. Lord, Lord, it became the uh, fuel. They drove the car from the crusade ground. Listen, there are some things that God will do out of necessity. Because at that time, there is no option. You go and we inside your car. Has the power of God changed? No, it has not changed. But it was necessary for God to give them a miracle at that time. Now, look at this clear example. Let me show you this one again. When they arrested my, uh, Peter in John, Acts 12, remember his case, the church prayed for him. What happened? The prison doors got open. He was released. But how did Peter later die? They later arrested him after he finished. He got to a point in his life. They arrested him. They nailed him to the cross. Turned him upside down. Did the church not pray? Why did God answer the first one? Did he answer the second one? It was necessary for God to answer us at that time. Say here. Are you confused? If you are blessed, shout I'm blessed. I didn't hear you clearly. You can make it better. I want to re-echo this statement. Stop thinking that God will not need your brain, your brain work, 
in order to help you. God doesn't do all things. He only does what he's supposed to do. And in doing what he's supposed to do, he will not play your role for you. Learn to use your brain well. Learn to use your brain well. Learn to use your brain well. Listen, no miracle is expected to overrule the function of your brain. No, no miracle will expect you to, um, to expect to overrule the function of your brain. I want you to understand that. Now, after David did that, what was the next thing he did to solve his problem? Let's run quickly. Let's read from verse 9 to verse 16. After he used his, his, uh, his brain well and presented it to God as a request, God gave him approval. Go ahead. That thing you have concluded, go and do it. What was the next thing? Verse 9 to verse 16. Let's be fast. We don't have all the time. 9 to 16. 1 Samuel 39. Thing. If you are there, you can read for me. Now let's go on. So David went, he and his men that were with him, and came to the brook Bizarre, where those that were left behind stayed. But David persuaded, uh, sorry, pursued he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Bizarre. Verse 11. And they found an Egyptian in the field. And brought him to David and gave him bread. I've taught you this before. This Egyptian that they found on the field, the man was laying down on the floor. They picked him up. They gave him bread to eat. They gave him water to drink. They gave him cake. The Bible says when the young man was, David asked him, Who are you? What are you doing on the floor? Why? Are you there? The man said, Ah, sir, we are the Amalekites. I'm the servant of one of them. We invaded so so and so land so so and so days ago. And David said, Eh? Okay, it's your people. He said, yes. Can you take us to them? The man said, yes. Listen, and listen good. If you are going to overcome challenge and secure your future, you must be a relationship conscious person. Everyone that God placed on your path is important to your destiny. You meet other parents in your children's school. Don't just throw them away. You meet somebody, you know, destiny bring it together. You are living in an area. That person is your neighbor. Don't throw them away. Every person you meet on your path is important to your destiny. Thank God that David did not just say, move that boy from the road. We don't have all. God said we should pursue. It is God's voice we are following. No matter the voice of God you hear, it takes the hands of man. To execute the promise of God to our lives. That's why you must be relationship conscious. And in any relationship, when you meet people, don't ever position yourself to receive. Always position yourself to be a blessing first. When they met that boy, they gave him bread. They gave him water. They gave him cake. You know what that guy had for them? He didn't have bread to give them. He didn't have cake to give them. He didn't have water to give them. But he had the information for them. That's why you must know what you are to get from every relationship. There are some relationships you are expecting money. They are not supposed to give you money. You will kill it. Some of you have killed some relationships like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Rubbish. I don't know. I don't know. But what? Tiara, one 
And Omi tied to her own mother, she went into man. Who brought Joseph to the palace? Answer me now. Ah, come bearer. Because some of you, when you see people you want to go, what, what is his position? If he's not a minister, you don't want to relate with them. He was just a cup bearer. And when Joseph met them, they were prisoners. Thank God that David did not despise that man. Stop despising people. And please don't forget what I said. What I before I move because of my time. Understand what every relationship is supposed to deliver to you. Some relationship will not deliver money to you. Everybody in this church knows. That's how me and my family relate with everybody. There is nobody in this church that we can call you by your first name. Even if we senior you. And I look at you and say, uh, 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 what's your name again? Uh, Jeremiah, come here. No. As, I, I, I will be 47 this year. He's not in my level. When we talk about age side wise. But I don't know what he has for me. I must do what? I must respect him. Some of you don't know what you lose when you despise people. He was just an ordinary Egyptian boy that was weak. Ah, but we Once he answer me now. Ah. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't despise me. Tell like somebody that is going somewhere. You don't know what I have for you. Because so many have made that mistake severally. I can't remember several relations. It's not I expect too much from people. My own is just that I'm too focused on where I'm going. That I used to see relationship as a waste of time. But I discovered that as focused as David was, because of the kind of prayer that was on him, God said pursue. He still had time to say stop. Give him bread. Give him water. Give him cake. You know how long it will take for that young man to be revived? Now, I don't know whether you have seen somebody that was really hungry before. Because ごめんね。あとやばい。ばって、じゃあもうコメディたまんをさ、とね。エブミニシャワーマ。エスモコメディ、アイウォッチライダー。ビカオルモスバッシティ、みなおディスカバーイトワズドンジャシダワズサイデ
Now, let's go on. The fourth thing that now happened, when this young man now took them there, David and his men got there. Verse 17. Let's go to verse 17 to verse 19. Fast, fast. I have just two more minutes. 17 to 19. What's happening to your sound? We need a new... If God, as God puts in your heart, anybody that will change, my, change this mic for me. They were telling me this morning that this mic is gone. So we need a new wireless mic for the altar, for my voice. I'll pray for you over it. And David smoothed... No, go back to verse 15. Verse 15, okay. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Yes, this is where I'm going. And David smoothed them from when? From the twilit evening. Let's read it with the Message Bible. Message Bible will help us put it in a clear form. MSG. David pounced, pounced. He fought them from before sunrise until evening the next day. Wait. English students. You studied English in uh, university, yes. What is before sunrise? Before sunrise. Dawn. Idaji. Ma? Carpenter laying. English students, la won. Let me discourage you, Baba Jesus, Carpenter. Kogbaili and English student, Lorara. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's finish this one. Now, she said, dawn, very early in the morning, he fought them from before sunrise until evening the next day. Now, if we are to calculate it, if a math student, oh yeah, how many hours would that be? Sir? Over? Over 13? Over 13? 30 hours. Why is it that hard? Why is it that difficult? When God is the one that said, pursue, you will overtake. Now, I wrote something down and I want to quote it that way to you. Listen to me. The promise, see, listen, the promise is the reason why you should keep fighting and moving tirelessly towards fulfillment. The promise is the reason why you should keep fighting and moving tirelessly towards fulfillment. This was the mentality of David. Stop thinking that since God is involved, it will be easy. Let it be that, listen, this is how it should be. Let it be that the reason you refuse to be tired is because you are sure what God told you. All these other people are saying, if God is there, it will be easy. It's a lie. If God is there, it will be hard. You know why it will be hard? It will be hard because the devil wants you to give up. But when people are saying, ah, brother, brother, back off now, sister, back off now, this thing is hard. That's why you should be saying, the reason why I will not give up is because I had God. And because God has spoken, I will keep fighting. Don't forget, they were already tired before they got there. But because they were sure of what they had. Every, any small thing, you are saying, okay, I, I don't think God has called me again. Nothing. It's like, let's, let's, let's look for another means. And it's, it's a clear sign that you are not sure of what you had. If you are sure of what God has told you, you keep fighting tirelessly. That's how to win. If you live like this, I'm telling you, you will secure your future. I was telling you a story, I will close with it. We were trusting God for fruit of the womb. I am a prayer machine. If you ask those that knew me before I got married, when I was a, a bro in church, fasting was like food to me. The woman I married to, fasting was like food to her. 
she got away. Tag bad to Abimo. It was during her fasting and praying in church one day that she conceived a dream. In that dream, saw that somebody was giving her local herbs. And she woke up and told me about it. And she decided to go look for herbs. Because when she told me, I said, go ahead. If that's what you have gotten, go ahead. And she went to go look for herbs. And they told her where they sell the herbs. They said it has different levels. First level, you will use it to wash your, your, your whatever. Second level, with different bottles, you will use it to fertilize your womb. Third level, they have listed all. And she paid for all. Only for her to use the first one. The day she was going to take, no, she had gone to collect the second one. They said she would leave it inside the bottles for it to soak very well. The day she was to take it, she opened it, the, smell, the odor came out, she threw up. I told her to cover it back. And God said to me, meet her now. In the presence of the bottles. That has not been used. And that is Eniola today. I shared this testimony in a church. And the, past, the pastor was ashamed. That how, why would Pastor Prince be talking about, be talking about in church? Now, I'm just trying to show you what today's believers have become. Now, look at the second process. The second process, after we've had Eniola, we're still trusting God. We have, you know, Let's have all our children and forget about it. We're still trusting God. One of our members too came to see me. The pastor, I don't know. I've just been feeling somehow. I need to see a doctor. And I said, I have this doctor friend though. Let's go together. As we got to the doctor's friend together, the doctor friend said, okay, madam, give the woman a sachet of drug. And after attending to her, the doctor friend said, ah, pastor, this one that you came with mommy today. Oh, yeah, can't be mommy now? And the doctor said, ah, Pastor Eniki Mama, come lie down. Sorry, ultrasound bed. And she lied down. The doctor just took the machine and put on her so much. And I said, ah, Pastor, hey, you eggs. I said, where? <laughs> and he showed me on the screen. He said, Madame still have seven days to be, to be pregnant. After seven days, she, will not be, she may not be pregnant. That within these seven days, she can still be pregnant. I said, then what do you want me to do? He said, do your work. Ah. No problem. That is the only of today. Can you imagine if we say no? Doctor is saying this, so don't mind him. Father! Father! Abashi Mashi, Father, Father, hate him. It's room are doing in yes, right? So many children of God are suffering today because they suspended their brain. As you see me, I read books, so both medical books, business books, anything that can be of gain to my life and to people, I read. Are you going to be a proper believer? That's why. If you live here today, listen, go back home after the service. Go and do a three-hour retreat. Think of way forward. Are you hearing me? After today, go home. Go and think for three hours. I'm not saying think of it, crying, thinking of, ah, oh, hey. Oh, no, me by. Paul, I read me by. You thinking tomorrow and come Thinking of what can I do to make my life better than this? One economy bad. And lost a new site. Illegal duro. 
Hey, the is small, kakiri ni. So it means that economy will bad to him. Money will only come to those that have an answer that will attract it. I'm not saying think only on money direction. Think all around. What will make my life better? After three hours of productive thinking, see, the conclusion of your thoughts, don't come and tell me. Now put it before God as David did. Shall I pursue? Rise up on your feet. Please play that song for me. You, you do not lie.